Good evening, boys and girls, and welcome to episode 148 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, live on YouTube. If you're watching live, you're very welcome. If you're watching the recording, you're very welcome. Whichever way you're watching, please feel free to interact, leave a comment, ask questions. I usually uh, get round to answering them as quickly as I can. I'm just looking at the tablet here to make sure that everything is coming through. Lara gets the first comment saying, hello, first time joining a live. Well, you're very, very welcome. Hope you, hopefully you'll be able to stay for episode 149 because that should be a very very interesting one and it will be coming soon after the end of this one. So for this episode um, I am going to be, I can't show you the, the, the full bottle of the, the, the proper bottle of this because I've, I've got this a lab sample. I'm going to be talking about a, a new release from a brand that I'm not overly familiar with and you can see here or you can see from the name of the video that it's Mask uh, Milano an Italian brand, appropriately enough, that's been around for a little while and its reputation has been steadily growing. Uh, over the course of the last few years I've done some mini reviews uh, of their work over on my blog, but I'm pretty sure that I've never done an in-depth review. Um, and the, the, they've just popped up on my radar a little bit more in recent weeks. Uh, it could be because I was invited to a, an online launch event um, for this particular bottle. I'm just laughing at Yura's comment because she's saying that is one disproportionate bottle design. Do you know what it reminds me of? Do you remember Contradiction from Calvin Klein, which was an interesting bottle design where about 95% of the bottle was the cap and then you sort of lifted this great big long cap and you saw that underneath the cap was actually the full bottle. It was kind of clever, but maybe it's... I think it's because the atomizer bit has to be quite substantial. So that's why they've done it that way. I don't know. Um, and I would very much like to get the founders of the brand um, live on this channel for an interview, perhaps in the new year. It would be good if I could arrange something with them, because I think um, uh, from my interactions with them, they're, they're a fascinating duo and, and they certainly talk very eloquently and very articulately about their perfumery work. And another thing that's interesting is that they are a brand that puts the name of the perfumer uh, front and centre. I think the perfumers actually, in their case, get their names on the on the bottles, on the actual perfume bottles, which which is uh, still not very common. I know we keep talking about how Frederick Mal was the first one to have done it, but there aren't very many brands that have followed suit. I'm not familiar with them either, says Eric. Uh, the only one I've tried was Russian tea, which I liked. Now, this one I have smelt. I've smelt a few times um, at the event, at the online, the virtual event. We also um, were able to smell um, the three accords that have gone into it, which I always love doing. I love seeing how the parts come together. And I've been really taken with this. This is called, the name isn't on here because they wanted to reveal the name during the event. The name is Rayflection. Now, if you ask me, you know, if I had a kind of creative director role, I would have given, tried to have given that that name a bit of a thumbs down. I think it's the kind of name that sounds good or sounds clever if if you're not if if you're perhaps not a native English speaker. That that is just my view, as is everything on this channel, obviously. Um, but reflection looks clever on paper, sounds clever as an idea, but but. As there you go, as Lara's saying, puns big no no. It, it, it's it's for for one thing, it's awful. It's it, it's awkward to say. You know what are you wearing? Ray flexion, um, and I, I don't think actually it's as clever as it thinks it is. But what at least you get from that name is that they are hoping for something that is um, uh, sunny, that is luminous, that is about reflections and is about a ray of sunshine, and at least the perfume does live up to that concept very, very convincingly. Um, Rayflection, that's kind of a gross name, says Herb. Why gross? Is there something that I'm missing about the name? Anyway, um, you think they're taking cue from Tom Ford, says Ashfark. No. No, let's not go there now. Um, Yura says, I agree with the CK contradiction similarities, yeah. Now, I'm really, really taken with the opening. This is a perfume composed, by the way, by Alex Lee, uh, the young perfumer who's at Mann, 
and who some of you may remember from many years ago when he had a perfume blog in which he was talking about his dream of becoming a perfumer, which he has now realised, he has now fulfilled. And I'm so, so, so taken with the opening of this perfume, perhaps the opening more so than the dry down, but never mind, because it, it is just such a sunny delight. And that's when I can at least forgive them the name to a certain extent, because talk about delivering what you said you were going to do on the tin. Um, it's just beaming, beaming, beaming with light and with sunniness. And interestingly, uh, a sort of winter sunniness, sunshininess, um, because I'm sure most of you will know uh, that Mimosa is, sorry, and I haven't even said Mimosa, it's a Mimosa scent, okay, mainly. Mimosa is uh, a winter blooming flower. And if you wanted to catch the, the scent of Mimosa in the air and you thought you, you know, if you were in the vicinity of the south of France, for instance, the time to go to the south of France to smell mimosa would be round about January, um, uh, February. And if you're fortunate enough to be, say, like in Nice, uh, at, uh, at uh, just before just before the start of Lent, when they have their carnival, the Nice carnival, and they have the Bataille de Fleurs, where they're throwing flowers out into the crowd. I can't imagine that happening in 2021, but never mind, let's not think about that. Um, one of the one of the, the 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 most ubiquitous flowers during that ceremony, during that event, is of course mimosa, um, and Alex Lee has just captured that creamy, sunshiny, powdery, yellow joyousness of mimosa so well, and I'm and I'm sure that part of that is because he's coupled it really, really cleverly, really skillfully with a cardamom note. And of course, if you think of the coolness of cardamom and also the slight green powderiness of cardamom with that woody inflection, you suddenly think, oh gosh, yeah, they, that goes with mimosa so well. Now, where I part company, I think, a little bit with the brand, and I will go through the press release for this perfume briefly, is they seem to um, be putting this forward as quite a strange floral, an alien floral, they're calling it. Um, and okay, I can I can I can go along with that up to the point where it's quite solar, so it feels like it's a mimosa that's being delivered to you on a ray of sunshine. But actually, I find it quite recognisable, uh, and and not strange or bizarre at all. You know, if I think of, for example. One of, one of the finest depictions of a really, really strange, unearthly flower is the jasmine of Thierry Mugler's Alien. That that really does something bizarre and otherworldly and cosmic with jasmine. I'm not sure this is doing anything like that with mimosa. Um, but it's not a problem because it's just so gorgeous. There is also a really, really delicious honey accord in there, um, which gives this a, a, a mouth-watering perhaps gourmand inflection, although it's not a gourmand scent. Um, and I think that's where I, I personally am just a little bit disappointed because it does start heading more towards the honey aspect and maybe the slightly animalic facets of honey, whereas I'm thinking, no, no, just keep doing keep doing that mimosa thing because the combination of the mimosa with the cologne, as with the cardamom, almost turns it into a mimosa cologne. Um, it's just you can't help but smile when you, you when when you smell this. It's such a delightful opening. One one of the most joyous perfume openings I've I've had the pleasure of encountering this year so far. We'll do we'll do some of your comments. Uh, Yura says sorry. Back to the bottle reminds me of pepper spray. Oh no, we're enough about the bottle now. Ashfaq says, did the Mask Milano team ever explain the reason to hike their prices so high after the new bottle design? No idea. I didn't even know they had. Lara says, love mimosa. Recently smelled Angel's Dust by Fran uh, Dust by Francesca Bianchi, which showcases this note. You're absolutely right. Uh, Lara says, oh sorry, talking about prices. Uh, Vladimir says, love mimosa. Papillon's Angelique is perfect. Yeah, that's more abstract though, isn't it? I, I really like Angelique from Papillon. Um, this is this is much more figurative, I feel. Uh, I adore yellow floral, says Eric. Umberto says the train from Nice to Cannes was filled with people with mimosa. I guess it was February. There you go. There you go. Um, 
Lara says, AD is quite sweet and fruity on me. Um, AD, am I missing something? Maybe I'm not. Maybe you mean, oh, maybe I'm being slow. Lara says, reminds me of Moulin Rouge by Histoire de Parfum and even the dry down of Naema a bit. Ah, oh, interesting. Ashfag, if you know someone near a Javois store, tell them to get samples from there. Javois gives free samples, as many as you like, when you visit any of their... Oh, sorry, Angel's Dust, sorry. I, I knew I was being slow. You're absolutely right. Okay, let's look at let's look at the press blurb for this. It's, it's not the shortest press blurb in the world, which makes it more than a blurb. Uh, so I won't read all of it, but just to give us a sense of um, uh, a flavour of it. Uh, Mask Milano is a niche Italian perfumery brand established in Milan by in 2010 by two co-founders, Alessandro Brun and Riccardo Tedeschi. The brand is now sold in 45 countries and is an extremely well-known brand in the communities of enthusiasts and fragrance addicted all over the world. All fragrances are connected by the fil rouge of being scenes of the same scented opera. Perfumers are, just like actors on stage, interpreters of the script conceived by the playwrights, Ricardo and Alessandro. All the perfumers selected to represent this scented opera are young and talented. Alessandro and Ricardo wanted to collaborate again with the female perfumers of the team to start a new collection. Here, the idea to create a woman collection with more feminine compositions only created by female perfumers. So have I got the wrong press release? Because... This one is done by Alex, so, okay. Um, right, this one then, uh, it, uh, there's a quotation from Alex Lee. It says, I was immediately interested in working on the concept of mimosa because on a personal level, mimosa was a flower completely foreign to me before I arrived in Europe. I first discovered this flower intimately during my perfumery studies in Grasse. It was. I was always in awe of the never-ending golden hills of blossoming mimosa in Tanneron, a small town near the coasts of the Côte d'Azur. I always wondered why there were so few mimosa-scented fragrances created in the history of perfumery. During my years of sharing my, my passion for perfumery, I also discovered that I was not alone, and that many people had little notion of this flower. This was truly an alien flower for many people in the world. Bit of a tenuous link there, but okay, we'll let you have that one. I sought to find the context to tell the story of this flower. Call it kismet or destiny. This brief gave me the opportunity to do it. During the briefing process, the word neon was the colour tone Mask Milano wanted for their perfume. The idea of a bright golden orange neon mimosa became the image that I wanted to translate. And okay, I get it, except the whole point of neon is that it's very much a light that you would associate with night because that's when you see neon signs for those places that still have them whereas to me this is so much about the day it's that spiciness that's great uh there's also interestingly uh information here about some of the uh, raw materials that have been used so there's something about the cardamom pure jungle essence they call it at man Cardamom is a spice from the Indian Malabar coast. It grows on a plant reaching up to four meters high with large exotic leaves from the same botanical family as ginger. Seeds are found at the bottom of the plant once their delicate flowers have bloomed. Cardamom green pods contain 15 to 20 seeds that turn white with the drying process, etc. Then it says, cardamom pods are shipped to France where they're extracted via our jungle essence technology. The result is the spicy characteristic cardamom note in a clearer, fresher, and impactful version, the extract reveals a majestic, spicy, effervescent note with a much brighter and fresher top hint than a classical essence. It could be that it's a that it's a, that it's a carbon dioxide extra ex extraction. I'm not sure. They talk about the uh, mimosa absolute that's in here as well, um, a special violet leaf absolute, a beeswax absolute. Uh, a cedar wood essential oil, and then something that they call orconox. Orconox is a molecule synthesized from, from sclariol, a natural compound extracted from clary sage. Orconox was created to replace the main molecule found in ambergris, a natural compound extracted from whale secretions that reveals a warm and animal woody note. Orconox is used in perfume as a base note and gives substantivity and long-lastingness. Its fragrance is very complex, with musky, woody, almost animal tones. It also unveils incomparable powdery and sensual notes. So, quite quite nice that we get this sort of information from a press release. I just want to look at 
comments from uh, the, you good people watching. There was a mimosa tree in my garden growing up, says Lara. Ali is saying hi. Uh, Umberto says the Estrel Mountains are yellow uh, because of the mimosa in February. I can see it from Cannes. That's fantastic. What a view that must be. Send, take a picture of it for us in February and send it to us. Herb says mimosa is a legume related to peas and beans. I've, because I, don't, I didn't know that. Many can be found around Lisbon. Eura says cardamom gives a very cooling effect usually. Do you think this with the honey-like mimosa gives that winter sun effect? Yes, I, I would imagine that is probably what it is. Really intrigued to try this. I, I would say do it. Even if the dry down becomes a little bit more of a straightforward honey scent, the, the, opening, the opening is just such a delight, such a joy. Okay, so that was Rayflection. Uh, from Mask Milano um, and we're going to do one more video for those of you watching live a brand new release I'm very nervous about this one but I will explain why when we spell it in a sec a brand new release from Serge Lutens see you in a few minutes bye